Welcome to 13. We're going to jump right into this, you guys. We're going to pick up where we left off last week with DoorDash. Um, I want to talk about this tipping culture thing. Um, let's put these pieces together today so that you guys really, you know, so we really get some some grasp on this because here's what's going on, you guys. Volume on DoorDash is down. Um, order volume. Um, people are in a recession. We're, or, I mean, you know, we're in a recession. People can debate that. You know, I'm, I'm seeing about like out of the people I talk to, you know, like maybe out of about 5% are saying, no, we're not in a recession yet. Or we're kind of right on the edge. 95% are like, dude, we're in a recession. We just metrically maybe on a federal level don't show it, but we're there. We all know that. And the inflation's so high that even if we're not quite to the recession, you should understand that we are there. Um, so this is making people draw back their purse strings, no matter what level of income they live on. Uh, last week, we talked about the new feature. The new feature is very wrong. Um, the way that it uh, is saying that um, orders with no tip might take longer to get delivered. Are you sure you want to continue? That's a screen that prompts if you don't put in a tip. Um, then it says uh, dashers can pick and choose which orders they want to do. Orders that take longer to be accepted by dashers tend to to result in a slower delivery. No doubt. Here's the problem though. Dashers can pick and choose which orders they want to do. That's some amb ambiguous language right there because you know what? No, they can't. They can, but they can't because DoorDash has implemented Diamond, Top Diamond, Top Dasher, this, that, the other, multiple tiers of Hey, if you do 70, if you do 50, if you do 70, if you do 90, if you do 99, and, and it'll just keep happening, you'll be able to see better offers. Okay. And then there's an acceptance rate. I've been an IC since the late 90s, working production, lasers, lighting, staging, sound, engineering, pyrotechnics, you name it. If it's in production, I've done it. Um, I've done it around the world. And it's always, there are sometimes they've asked me for a bid, but usually it's a proposal that comes in to me. There are multiple ways that independent contractorship can happen in this country under the IRS standards, the IRS uh, independent contractor guidelines, or under the Barella test. The Barella test is looking, it, it's looking to, there's a big push, we all know this, on the legislation that will be coming next year to many states, and let's fight it in all the states, the ones that are really bad, in fact, because some of them do not benefit the drivers at all um, and move towards employee models. But here's the thing. Um, acceptance rates should not be on any of these apps, not even as a metric for yourself. Like even if it's one that doesn't weigh in, it's psychological. You see a low acceptance rate, especially the new people, and they think, I got to get that up. And actually, I used to say, but you don't. It's just there for psychological reasons. Here's the thing you do because now DoorDash is rewarding you for having a higher AR. Guess what, guys? Under all testing, ABC um, doesn't really address this, but, the, um, but it would be included. Here's the other thing, though. All the tests going back to when this all started, IRS test, Borella test, whatever you want to use for testing if you're an independent contractor, acceptance rating not only isn't mentioned, it is mentioned in other language in all of these saying you cannot gauge somebody on if you give them, basically, if you give them a proposal or if you accept a proposal from an independent contractor, you cannot gauge them or in any way affect future proposals to these people based on whether they accept them or not. Therefore, we're going to have a lot of legislation because as I've said, we needed this space needed to be defined as a hybrid independent contractor space a long time ago. The app based gig economy needed to be its own space of independent contractorship. Now we're going to get the laws ahead of the definition. And that's a problem because if we had just defined the space, then the laws have to tweak around the definition of the space. But now each state gets to push their own agenda. Luckily, we did not get a pro act. Um, you know, so that's a great thing because that would have been nationwide employment for all independent contractors. All now, what, what I used to say 59 million is now 65 million plus independent contractors in this country out of the 178 
million working in this country, 65 million plus are independent contractors. So you guys do the math. This is no joke. We're getting up on 40% of the U.S. economy are independent contractors, self-employed business owners, freelancers, that kind of thing. Um, so it's not something that's going away, not just the gig economy, but independent contractorship. But they are looking to majorly... Look, if, if the current administration could have their way, we would all have to be employees in a union, not just gig-based, everything. In a perfect world, that's what they would want. Um, luckily, we have the other side who says, we don't want that at all. Now, we do need to find some kind of common ground because we can't let these apps just keep dropping, dropping, dropping and hurting drivers. But now they're going after the customers. If you don't tip, they're, they're playing the psychological games on their own customers now because now it's like, okay, here's I'm, I'm going to order these items. You get your family of four. Okay, let's get the, what do you want? What do you want? What do you, you put the order together? Okay, there's the order total which is more than it would be in the restaurant because they use higher amounts. Now you get uh, the processing fee, the delivery fee. Okay, geez. Now you get a screen that says, hey, you didn't tip. Now, tipping culture is very strange. A lot of countries don't do it. Um, but here we do do it. And here it is. I, I, I honestly believe it's here to stay. Tipping culture needs to be here because it's kind of how... It's just how a lot of things work in the U.S., and it does work for us. I can tell you that there are locations where I would have never worked in a restaurant or bar because they don't do enough volume. So you, you, it's always based on volume. Where's the volume? That's where I want to work. Or that's where if I have to take a job here to get to there, I'll do it because I want to work at that bar where I can make a lot of tips. It's always the tips. But... We're entering a whole new psychological game that these apps are very in tune with, which is now actually hitting the customers. Hey, you better tip or else your food's going to get get there cold if even gets there at all, which is, again, another big problem they face. Why do you think so many catering companies are popping up? Why is there delivered? Paraworks, deliver that, easy cater. I mean, I can name 25 catering apps. Guess why? Because those catering apps expect you to do every one that you accept to not unassign it and to finish it. DoorDash allows you a 10% give on unassigning orders. I can't tell you the amount of times. I mean, actually, it's been that many times where people have told me, dude, I scored. I got like $400 in free food today because DoorDash screwed up. Great. That's the driver. How do you think the customer who was counting on a catered event felt when somebody unassigned that catering order, it got screwed up and somehow never even got to them. I mean, this is why, why do you think these catering companies are popping up? They're popping up because of supply and demand. Even in this market, there's a ton of supply or there's a ton of demand for catering. But the problem is, it's not a problem. But the, the customers who do catering orders, they damn well expect those catering orders to show up without excuse. So these catering apps don't have acceptance ratings, but they do count on you to, if you take a scheduled or whatever catering order that you will fulfill it, that you won't unassign it. DoorDash allows you to unassign this. This is crazy to me. I mean, if nothing else, don't allow unassigning with catering orders. Are you crazy? You're losing all of your business. I'm happy because I'm not a big fan of DoorDash. I think that their company operates way, way outside the radar, more, even worse than most gig apps. Um, but yeah, so we've got that going on. So now we've got this thing about like, you know, we're kind of rewriting tipping because a lot of people don't want to tip until after the fact. They want to see the service. Hey, I grew up, I grew up with that. I, I you know, I go in, I'm going to tip 20%, right? But I might tip. If I'm, if I'm out with some friends, we might tip 30, 35% to a bartender we know because they were giving us some extra service that night and maybe we were being a little loud and uh, a little harder to deal with, not necessarily like trouble, but you know, like just, you know, when it's busy and you can just sense it. So we honestly, you know, want 20% is kind of like my average. It's just like, you're going to get that even for bad service. It just might, if it's horrible, I just might not come back. Um, the other thing is, is that if uh, 
last week we talked about um, some of the nuances there. I did want to point out real quick, if in, if you're newer to DoorDash, don't, I want you guys to understand, you guys can go look this up. In 2019, they had to pay $2.5 million because DoorDash was keeping tips from the customers and not giving them to the, to the drivers after the fact. And in fact, it wasn't an error. When they went to court, they admittedly said that. No, we showed the driver what they'd make. And then if somebody tipped beyond that, we were keeping it because we already showed them what they'd make. Are you kidding me? It's a tip. It's not going to you for being such a great middleman platform. And as SAAS, as we call them, uh, software as a service. But here's the last thing I want to point out, because this also hurts the customers. So we're going to look, I'm going to bring back that same family of four um, example I was using. This is out of Austin, Texas. And um, so here is a family of four ordering from a restaurant. So you can see 2020 on the far right, uh, 2021 going left, 2022 going left more, 2023 going all the way to the left, being most current. Um, if you look between 2022, I mean, you guys can pause this screen after the fact and take a look so that you can really look at it and understand. But in 2022 to 2023, the items on this menu at this restaurant, all items averaged an 18% price increase on the platform side of the, of the ordering. Therefore, if you were ordering off DoorDash, Uber Eats, any of those, you were paying 18 to 20% more for in a 12-month period than you used to at the same restaurant on items. A normal increase for a restaurant is 4 to 6%. On, on food items year over year. So this is them just taking you to the cleaners on amounts. This is them now saying, here's the process. Here's your food, which is overpriced. Here's your processing, which has gone up. Here's your delivery charge, which has gone up. And then if you leave a $0 tip, by the way, your food will be cold because you didn't tip. Are you sure you don't want to? Now, correct me if I'm wrong. They have a lot of people behind this team, but it's been mistake after mistake after mistake. Is this good business? Leave it in the comments below. Is DoorDash, is DoorDash being ethical? And are they conducting good business with their dashers and or with their customers? That's 13 minutes of news in just under 13 minutes. Peace.